Good morning. Today we will be discussing the knowledge that you will require as a teacher in the classroom. Of course by now you know, the only knowledge that you need is not just about the content of the subjects that you're going to be teaching. There are various different types of knowledge that a teacher needs, things that you need to know in order to make you an effective teacher. These types of knowledge covered in this module are the pedagogical knowledge, content or subject knowledge, combined pedagogical subject knowledge, and furthermore, the technological pedagogical content knowledge. Before we jump into unpacking the different types of knowledge that you'll need, let's quickly have a look at this funny word over here, pedagogy. I have shown you how to pronounce it, pedagogy, and your pedagogy is what you think and believe about learning and teaching, how you believe learners learn best, and also how you think teaching is done best. Often what we believe about how to best teach or how to best learn is influenced by our experiences, our own learning experiences when we were in school, about how we ourselves learn best. But we need to keep in mind that we have diverse learners in our classroom with different learning needs. So we can't just look at our own specific needs or experiences. Another impact that influences pedagogy or what we believe about teaching and learning are social factors. In other words, we have a look at the society and the community in which we teach. We look at economic factors. We look at the resources that the school have available. We also look at the experiences and the resources that the learners have at home. These could definitely impact the way we teach, the examples we use in our classroom. For example, using examples of international travel, aeroplanes, holidays for learners who are in a very underprivileged community won't be as effective because maybe they've never been on an aeroplane. Maybe they've never been on an international holiday. So we would then need to adapt our teaching to the social factors within the community that we're teaching. Of course, cultural factors, different ways of showing respect, different ways of speaking to different people, cultural factors will have a big influence on how we teach as well as how our learners learn. The developmental stage as well as the developmental age of the learners will impact how we teach. Of course, I will teach grade 8s very differently to how I will teach grade 12s. And then political and physical factors. Political factors, if we look at what's happening in the Ukraine at the moment, those teachers are teaching in a war zone. They will teach entirely differently to how we teach in a you know suburban area where things are much calmer and the physical factors of the school as well as even climate factors physical factors about how hot the classroom is um physical factors about how big the classroom is the resources that the school has space that we have outside to go and explore access to different things within the physical school environment will also greatly impact how we teach I often think that if I were teaching, for example, in the Cape Flats, where it maybe isn't safe to go outside in the middle of the day to go and present a lesson outside of school or even visit outside for a field trip, I will teach very differently in that environment to what I would teaching at a private school in a suburban area where it is safe to move outside around outside within the parameters of what is allowed at the school. And you need to make sure that as a teacher, you are best prepared for any situation that you're going to be in. Often I find that the more challenging schools to teach at are the ones that shape us and make us the best teachers because we have to be the most creative in those schools. And your pedagogy or what you believe about how learners learn best and how teachers teach best will influence how you teach how you communicate with the learners inside and outside of the classroom, and how you communicate with the parents. So my personal pedagogy, I believe that communicating with the learners outside of the classroom, for example, 
watching them play sports and saying, wow, what a great goal you scored during the soccer match, greatly influences how the learners behave in class and then how I can teach. I believe that the learners love to see their teacher supporting them, encouraging them, seeing the teacher outside of a classroom could definitely, in my opinion, influence how the learners behave in the classroom and how the teacher can teach in the classroom. The same as a teacher that perhaps is walking around the playground on playground duty and just screaming and shouting and being really mean to all the learners, that would greatly impact how um, teaching would take place in her classroom, for example. And then how we communicate with parents. Um, again, our pedagogy will impact how we communicate with parents. So if I believe that there should be a lot of communication about the development of the learners, the development of the curriculum, what's coming up so that the parents know in advance, just in general, lots of communication between the teacher and the parent, then I will teach very differently. That will be based on how I believe teaching and learning happens. Or some teachers may believe that communication should only happen inside the classroom and during parents' evening. So her pedagogy would greatly impact how she communicates with parents. And then, of course, we are greatly influenced about how we were taught. Perhaps we were taught in a very teacher-centered classroom by a teacher who sat at his desk all day and put the notes up on the board and we learned in that environment. Or we were taught by a wonderful teacher who used a lot of different teaching strategies, was very creative. This, um, our pedagogy is influenced by how we were taught, but we must always strive to be better. Even if we have the best teacher, we must try and be even better than the best we had. Now looking at the different types of knowledge, the first type of knowledge that I'm going to refer to that we need a teacher to have is pedagogical knowledge. So we've just spent quite a bit of time unpacking and discussing pedagogy. So what we want to know is how do you believe you will best teach EMS specifically? How will you be able to teach economic and management sciences in the senior phase? Of course, you need a sound knowledge of the curriculum, the CAPS documents, and the assessments of your learners. How will you best assess your learners in order to meet the outcomes of the CAPS? Remember, there are many types of assessments that will meet different needs and will be able to test if the learners have met the different outcomes. We discuss assessments in a lot of detail later this year. And then our pedagogical knowledge, how we believe EMS is best taught, can also be determined by different theories. We learn about them in Learning Unit 2, behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. These theories and which theory we most believe to be true will definitely impact our pedagogy and how we believe the best EMS is taught and learned the best way. Then, very, very important are teaching and learning strategies. For example, a teacher-centered lecture-style approach in the classroom or a learner-centered group work approach in the classroom that is um, greatly impacted by our pedagogy, the different teaching and learning strategies we will use. These we learn about in Learning Unit 3, and they are so, so, so important. I really give a lot of emphasis to this as well in your assignments, because we need to know the different types of teaching and learning strategies there are in order to choose the most appropriate one for the content that we are teaching. And very important as well is our pedagogy, our pedagogical knowledge um, will also determine our classroom management strategies. And it's very important to know how to manage your classroom, how to maintain discipline while the learners are feeling free to explore and a mutual sense of respect in order for learning to happen. A classroom where the learners are just yelling all the time, never sitting down, is not conducive to optimal learning. And you need to have a very good pedagogical knowledge about classroom management strategies so that you will know which strategies to implement in different situations, as well as for different grades, different subjects, different types of learners. Next up, a type of knowledge that you will need is the content knowledge. And the content knowledge refers to the content of the subject EMS, 
This you will find in the textbooks, and this you completed when you completed your, your economics modules. This is about what is in the textbooks. You need to have a very good knowledge about all of the different contents, the economy, financial literacy, entrepreneurship. You need to know the content really well and really understand it, especially the financial literacy part, and really understand it in order to be able to teach it really well. So now we've discussed your pedagogical knowledge, so your knowledge about how to teach. And we've discussed that you will need content knowledge, in other words, the subject knowledge, what is inside the textbook. And then we get to a combined pedagogical content knowledge. And this is really important. You need to now know what the learners need to learn, what is inside the textbook, the content or the subject, and also how to teach it, the pedagogy. Given that we are living in the fourth industrial revolution, if you have not heard of this, please go and do a quick YouTube search. I refer to it quite a lot throughout this module. It is so important for you to understand not only what the fourth industrial revolution is, but also how it impacts you and your learners in any school environment. So we're talking about how technology will impact you and your learners in any school environment, in an under-resourced school or in a very well-resourced school. We are living in the fourth industrial revolution, and this is going to impact how we teach, as well as the knowledge that our learners need. So you now need to go a step further than just knowing the content and knowing how you're going to teach it. And now you need to know a different type of knowledge that you need is how to use technology to teach the content and, the, and how to teach it. So your technological content knowledge, it should actually be here in the middle, my arrow is a bit short, is about the technology that you can use. Remember, even at a very under-resourced school, you're going to need to find out what technology you can use and how you can use it, even if it is teaching through WhatsApp. That is using technology to teach. Even if it is bringing an iPad to school and all of the learners have different turns, using it in order to Google something, to generate knowledge on the technology. This is so important. In a well-resourced school, this is much easier. Most learners have their own cell phones. Most learners have their own iPads. Most schools have smart boards and projectors. But even in an under-resourced school, we need to know how to bring the technology into what we teach and how we teach.